This Reggie Jackson baseball card is proof that his lost season actually happened. Pulling a Reggie Jackson baseball card from a wax pack in the 1970s was like finding candy corn in your Halloween bag. You either were thrilled because it was your favorite or disappointed because you'd hoped for something with a little more substance. Either way, though, you were sitting pretty because Reggie and Candy Corn was the biggest name and the biggest market in the game. And you could always find someone who would trade you, say, a Cubs team for your Mr. October pasteboard. But before Reggie became Reggie with the New York Yankees, he helped the Oakland A's to three straight World Series championships until Charlie O. Finley decided that success was too expensive and sold off his stars for, well, for a Cubs team set, or that's how the rumor went. The exact make and model of said cardboard returns were never disclosed, but judging by Finley's catbird grin in later years, you'd have to assume it was a 1974 Tops, and that his trading partner saw fit to include a Bill Maddock rookie. While Charlie O. may have been delighted to decimate his team in the name of the almighty dollar, Reggie was more than happy to move on once it became clear that he couldn't ply his trade on the biggest stage in the baseball world. Looking back, it seems almost impossible that Reggie Jackson, under any circumstances, would not have made his way to the Bronx to deliver George Steinbrenner and Billy Martin from the position in Boston's rearview mirror. So devoted are the baseball gods to the dramatic. And while history does show that the Yankees won the series in both 1977 and 1978, the truth is that the straw that stirred the drink and ate away at King George's stomach lining made a stop between the Bay and immortality in New York. With free agency looming thanks to the work of men like Kurt Flood, Marvin Miller, and Reggie's old teammate, Catfish Hunter, Jackson was poised to make a lump of cash that old Charlie Finley was not willing to cough up. To sidestep any further talk of contract disputes or outrageous salaries, Finley traded the soon-to-be 30-year-old slugger to the Baltimore Orioles on April 2, 1976. Reggie turned in a decent, though not spectacular, year in the harbor during that bicentennial summer and was gone by November. Aside from a few snapshots which surfaced from time to time and the scattered memories of old-time bird fans who swear that Reggie didn't fit the Oriole way, there is scant little evidence that 1976 ever happened at all for Mr. October. In fact, if it weren't for one of the rarest of all Topps proof cards, we might well have been left with the impression that Reggie Van Winkle went to sleep by the bay in the fall of 1975 and woke up in Yankee Stadium on opening day in 1977. But as early as the first years of the 1980s, and maybe even earlier, rumors swirled in the hobby that a bona fide 1977 Topps baseball card showed Reggie Jackson in his Baltimore Orioles uniform and had been sighted on at least one occasion. Most of us shrugged off the idea as nonsense, because Reggie's number 10 base card with his green airbrush Yanks batting helmet is so iconic. The idea persisted, though. And then the Jackson Orioles card began to get mentions in the yearly Beckett price guide as a blanked back proof card that never made it out of the factory. Well, almost never made it out, as evidenced by at least one that had escaped long enough for someone to capture a black and white photo of it. It was mouthwatering stuff, especially when you consider the total population estimate of just one or two and a potential value in the thousands. How could we get our hands on one? Well, obviously we couldn't. And so, we moved on to other oddities, like C. Nettles and all Robrowski, and even white letter mantles. Still half convinced that the black and orange Reggie was nothing but a wishful myth, all the while holding out hope that we'd one day accidentally find one jammed into a pack of 1983 foldouts. The hobby boomed. The hobby busted. Card shops opened and card shops closed. Children were born and grew up. Cubs and Red Sox fans cursed and hoped and lost. Reggie Jackson got old and retired. True collectors did what true collectors do, continuing to buy our cards when we could afford them and working to finish off sets or player runs or rapper series. We mostly forgot about the bad taste that the 1990s left in our mouths, like the 20-year-old stick of orange or peachy gum. And then in May of 2004, Topps opened the vault, the archive of materials they had collected in 50 years of card making that wound through the dreams of little boys and old men alike. 
Among the treasures they wheeled out and paraded in front of drooling hobbyists was the proof that Reggie had played for the Orioles in 1976 and that he'd almost had a Baltimore card in 1977. The card, as legend had always told us, was blank backed and depicted a beaming Jackson in his unairbrushed home white Orioles uniform, with the Yankees team name emblazoned on the top border. It was the holy grail of modern baseball cards. The card was sold at auction, closing on May 9, 2004. According to sportscaster and sometimes other caster, Keith Oberman, something on the order of eight of these Reggie Proofs exist, and it's been rumored that Oberman himself owns a couple of those. Maybe Keith will open his own vault someday, and we'll learn the dark, stale gum secrets that lie within. Thanks to a funky 1977 Topps Reggie Jackson baseball card, though, collectors can rest easy knowing that treasures still do pop up from time to time, and that the next hobby legend we hear about just might turn out to be real. <laughs>